Okay, now I'm joined by the Honorary Professor of International Relations at Wits University, John Stremlow, just to discuss this visit, along with what we can expect to come out from it. Prof, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Just a short while ago, we were live in Washington with President Ramaphosa arriving at the residence of uh, uh, Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, being welcomed. Both of them quickly making remarks about uh, what kind of topics they are looking forward to cover when they start their discussions, among them security, issues of health, issues of women empowerment on our continent. Any surprise there? No, there's no surprise there. This was uh, topics that were featured in the strategic dialogue. You can remember back in August here when uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was here to uh, meet with Dr. Nalandi Pandor. And I heard Dr. Pandor uh, the night before last uh, speak to a Washington audience about this important uh, meeting that is taking place today. And she also featured trade and investment and the practical things of infrastructure and health and climate and energy that are, are high on the agenda of both countries. But Dan, let's not kid ourselves at the, at the same time, both the United States and South Africa have very deep domestic divisions. And I think it's extremely important for President Ramaphosa and Joe Biden to reach out to each other uh, in, in what was not a, the most diplomatic but interesting point that, that Dr. Pandor made was that it's easier for South Africa to deal with the obvious point, to deal with the Democrats, than to deal with the Donald Trump Republican-dominated party. And so um, this is an opportunity to seize, and I'm very pleased that it's happening. Yeah, just to help us to understand the itinerary. I mean, first now, there'll be other engagements, but this, this morning in Washington time, meeting with the vice president first. What is the significance of that ahead of meeting Joe Biden? Well, don't forget that uh, Joe Biden is older than I am. And so he's 79, 78, 79. And um, he has um, got a vice president who's very dynamic and younger than he is. If he was to step aside, she would probably fill his shoes or attempt to by uh, the, the 2024 election. We don't know uh, how these are going to play out politically. But I think, one, it's very important for um, President Ramaphosa to connect to the younger generation, the next generation of leaders of the Democratic Party, one. And secondly, she is going to be representing the United States at, uh, at the funeral for, for um, uh, the Queen Elizabeth. And, and, and bless his heart, says, uh, President uh, Ramaphosa is going to fly from, from New York, uh, from Washington to, to uh, London and then back to uh, open the General Assembly uh, speeches uh, early next week. So he's got a very busy schedule, and I'm glad they took the time. I wish that I could have heard the remarks on the doorstep. I didn't. I was watching it with great pleasure, but I don't know what they said. Yeah, well, they just shared about the topics. They were very brief. It was not even uh, more than three minutes. And with uh, Kamala Harris uh -huh. just welcoming Ramaphosa and, and thanking him for his leadership, and looking forward to, to, to hearing more from him as, as a leader, plus the number of subjects, including security and the others. There was, it was a very brief moment, and then they went inside the house. So, so this is like a very important kind of conversation and dialogue between the two. And as you point out, it could also be having a, a vision to the future beyond 2024. That's it, exactly. But um, what, what is also important about this meeting is that they're emphasizing the practical steps that they could take together, uh, perhaps with other countries. And of course, for the benefit of the rest of Africa, which is of great concern to South African foreign policy, obviously. But um, at the same time, uh, the press has been emphasizing the uh, Ukraine war as being something that will be on the agenda. I'm not sure how much they will talk about it, but what my, my approach is let's, let's follow their uh, signals that it's not going to be an issue that's going to divide them, but they do have to 
grapple with the, the effects of that war on hunger in Africa, on the economy of, of South Africa and the United States and supply chain issues, the practical things that will affect investment and and trade in the future, because after all, the U.S. is the third largest trading partner of South Africa, and there are 600 companies that are down here from the U.S., so that it is important for our long-term economic cooperation in future to get through this uh, crisis that is uh, unfolding uh, and is basically a European problem, uh, that is to say, the invasion of uh, Ukraine. Yeah, and also by now, since Antony Blinken was here, and had the, the meetings he had with the, Dr. Naledi Pandu and other government ministers, and also publicly expressed by President Ramaphosa, the South Africa's position regarding the Russia-Ukraine war is now very well known. They may not agree with each other, but each side they know where they stand regarding that. One would assume it shouldn't take too much time at the table when there are pressing matters around trade, investment, infrastructure, health and climate change. No, that's exactly right. At the same time, uh, Dan, don't forget that the conflict in Ukraine is very dynamic. The the president of, of Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin, is meeting with Xi Jinping uh, in Uzbekistan uh, the last day or so. And it was clear that there are strains between um, China and uh, Russia, even though they're putting on a good face about their overall partnership. But the uh, Ukrainian surprise this week uh, of, of scoring major victories against the Russian invaders uh, has scrambled our calculations. And my hope is that uh, President uh, Ramaphosa and, and Joe Biden will talk frankly and uh, about the scenarios. Uh, apparently, uh, even though South Africa wants to see negotiations, we all want to see a negotiated settlement and end this con bloody conflict. But uh, the, the Secretary General of the UN called Putin to two days ago and was told that there is no prospect of negotiation, at least from the Russian side. And uh, Chancellor Schoss uh, of uh, Germany called uh, Putin and had the same message. So we're in a stalemate right now, it looks like, but it's a very dynamic uh, a situation that's not a contradiction. It's a it's a, a reflection of the fact that the, that the Ukrainians really surprised uh, me and surprised the world by their uh, tenacity and their ability to outfox the the the, the Russians uh, who have a much more powerful military. But it's 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 not being very effective in Ukraine. Yeah, and South Africa had offered earlier to mediate. And let's see what's going to happen coming out of Washington. Thank you very much for your time and your insights, sir. That's Professor John Stramlow just uh, giving us some insights about the President Ramaphosa's visit to the United States at the invitation of American President Joe Biden. Currently, he's in talks with Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States. Later in the day, he's going to be meeting with Mr. Biden.